Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips and I have a couple topics to talk about today. One is protein and for those of you who just get sick and tired of this question, you know, we talk about eating a plant-based diet, where do you get your protein? There is really no such thing as protein deficiency in a well-fed population, but nonetheless, reverence for protein continues. Athletes are continually told to eat a high-protein diet. People who are sick are often told by health providers, you should eat more protein because it will help you heal up faster, which is actually not quite so true. And of course, a lot of the protein comes from animal food and the traditional diet. And, um, and some health professionals say you need protein from animal food to promote good health and to recover from disease. Well, actually the opposite is true. So researchers looked at the relationship between protein intake and both disease specific and all cause mortality. Uh, they had a little over 6,300 adults age 50 and older who were enrolled in, a, in the UNHANES study, which is an ongoing uh, survey of um, eating habits here in the United States. For all participants, average calorie intake was 1,823 calories a day, most of which was carbohydrate at 51%. Fat intake was 33% of calories and protein 16%. And most of that came from animal foods, 11% of calories from animal protein. Participants were categorized according to how much protein they ate. The high protein eaters were 20% or more, the moderate 10 to 19% of calories, and low protein less than 10% of calories. Now during 18 years of follow-up, 40% of all the subjects died, 10% from cancer, 19% from cardiovascular disease, and 1% from diabetes and then a lot of other miscellaneous causes. But what was really interesting was the source of protein in the diet was related to death rates. Participants, participants aged 50 to 65 in the high protein group had a 75% increased risk in, uh, for overall mortality and a fourfold greater risk of death from cancer. But for those who consume most of their protein from plants, the increased risk almost disappeared. In other words, if you were to eat a diet high in plant protein, which I don't think is the best idea, uh, you don't increase your mortality risk, but a diet high in animal protein did. In fact, a middle-aged person eating a diet high in animal protein is four times more likely to die, according to this study, than a person eating a low-protein diet. It really does uh, food for thought, right? Interestingly, high protein intake in subjects over 65 was associated with a lower risk of all cause and cancer mortality, but for subjects in this age group eating a diet high in animal protein, the risk of diabetes mortality was increased fivefold. Now, the risk of developing diabetes in the first place is uh, related to animal uh, to protein intake. Those individuals who didn't have diabetes at the start of the study had a 73-fold increase in risk as a result of eating a high protein diet and a 23-fold risk of dying, um, uh, increased risk of dying from diabetes. Another thing that was interesting, levels of insulin-like growth factor were lower in the subjects age 50 to 65 who ate a low-protein diet, uh, while there was little relationship between protein intake and IGF-1 levels in those over 65. Uh, so apparently once you get to the age of 65, you can tolerate a little more protein on the cardiovascular and all-cause mortality side, but boy, do you have an increased risk of death from some other things. Higher levels of IGF-1, by the way, have been associated with several different forms of cancer. Uh, in addition to looking at these data for humans, the researchers also conducted studies on mice. Uh, for animals eating a low-protein diet who were implanted with melanoma cells, the tumors showed much slower growth and remained significantly smaller during the study period. Some mice were implanted with breast cancer, and for those animals, 100% of the mice eating a high-protein diet developed tumors. Only 70% of the low-protein mice developed tumors. By the 53rd day, the tumors in the mice eating the low-protein diet were 45 percent smaller than tumors in the high protein mice. So big differences between protein intake in terms of outcomes with cancer. Now the strengths of this study in my opinion is that it corroborates the findings of a whole lot of other studies. I mean I'm sure as you're listening to me talk about this and talking about the mice, you're thinking about the rat experiments at Cornell, um, looking at the difference in humans, you're thinking about the study of um, the rural Chinese when uh, Colin Campbell and his group did the China project. And, and you can see data like this. I mean we have a lot of popular population data now showing clearly differences in eating patterns in areas where the cancer rate is significantly higher. So um, diets high in animal protein create significant risks for individuals and, 
Uh, people who promote these kinds of diets, they're either ignorant, which is inexcusable, it's your job to read this stuff if you're in the health field, or they're willfully choosing to ignore it, which means that they're ethically challenged. I don't think either is a good choice, but um, I think it's becoming increasingly clear that advocating a high animal protein diet is a risky practice, and uh, people who do that are highly suspect. So anyway, on to another um, uh, topic that deals with excess. Uh, a lot of health professionals won't let evidence stand in the way of a good story. And of course, people love to hear good news about their bad habits. And one bad habit people love confirmation for is drinking a lot of alcohol. And uh, I've warned people that all of these studies that have shown that drinking alcohol promotes better health have a problem, which is that they've used as the control groups former drinkers, primarily. Now, there are a lot of reasons why people stop drinking. Sometimes it's serious alcoholism, sometimes it's serious health issues, but moderate drinkers will always look better compared to the former drinkers. Um, I covered earlier this year, and you can find it in the Health Briefs Library, a study that finally looked at the difference between people who um, uh, are moderate drinkers versus those who are never drinkers, never took up the habit, and the benefits for moderate drinkers disappeared in almost every age group and, and that sort of thing. I think there was one group that actually was a little better off, and it was women my age having two drinks a month. All right. Now, in spite of this, a lot of health professionals are recommending red wine particularly uh, for daily consumption. I mean, David Perlmuter specifically recommends drinking red wine every single day in his book, Grain Brain. Um, first of all, I don't think I could pump out this type of work if I did drink every day. Um, I just don't know how people do it and maintain their concentration. But besides all that, a new study shows that, um, that this may not be such a good idea, but that many people believe that it is. And, and the people who believe that drinking more is a good idea, they practice what they preach. They actually follow through on that belief and they drink more. So here's basically what happened. Researchers analyzed data from participants who were enrolled in the Health eHeart health e study. Out of a total of almost 5,600 participants, 30% thought that alcohol was healthy, heart healthy, 39% thought that it was unhealthy, and 31% not so sure. Um, when people who thought that alcohol drinking was heart healthy, when they were asked, where did you get this idea, they almost all reported that they got it from the media. So the media is an important source of information about health. Uh, which sometimes is a good idea. I mean, that's how people find out about us, but they sure do find out about a lot of other bad things, too. Uh, several factors were associated with the perception of alcohol as health-promoting, and these included older age, higher education, higher income, living in the United States, and having coronary artery disease. So in other words, being educated and affluent doesn't protect people from misinformation, and often those most at risk, in this case, people who had coronary artery disease, are sometimes the most likely to believe inaccurate information. Of course, I think it goes back to the love to hear good news about the bad habits thing. Now, those who believed alcohol to be health promoting, practiced what they preached, as I mentioned earlier, they drank 47% more alcohol on average than people who didn't think that this was so. Well, in response to this type of information, some people suggest that we need to censor health information by the media, which sounds like a great idea. It's just not in a country that values free speech. I think the only way that we're ever going to change this is to just keep putting out accurate information um, and with references and trying to help people understand the difference between good and bad information. And by the way, um, we're starting now to post on the informed medical consumer platform. Every couple weeks will be a lecture. Uh, so that will be a great way for our members and, and students to learn more about this issue. But we just got to keep putting the accurate information out there. Um, and we've seen how good information about diet can dry up the demand for unhealthy foods. I think good information about health can dry up the propensity to follow people who just put out a lot of inaccurate information. So anyway, um, full disclosure, I'm not a teetotaler, but I don't kid myself that alcohol is health promoting and uh, I can nurse a single glass of wine for four hours and long periods of time between the time when I have a glass of wine and the next time I have a glass of wine. I'm really careful about that these days and I think you should be too. All right, that's all for today and all for the week. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it. And I'll be back to you next week with more news.